laws.
ask that you remain standing to the play slash victory song. Thank you. 
that help them graduate tonight. So would you all please stand so we can recognize you help these students get through. I'd also like to recognize our keynote speaker, Dr. Kathy Hintz. Uh, Kathy's actually a medical doctor by training. Uh, she was a longtime Indian Health Service Area Director, and currently she's the President and CEO of the Blandon Foundation in Grand Rapids, Minnesota. She'll be our keynote in a little while, so there'll be more introductions to her in a little while. All right, graduates, uh, congratulations. As you already know, you've just accomplished a very life-changing thing. I mean, you've, you've done something really special tonight. Your life is dictated by the decisions that you make. Choosing to attend Beach Lake Travel College was a really good decision. Deciding to graduate from Beach Lake Travel College was a great decision. I know some of you are going to be going on to uh, further education. I know some of you are going to go to work. But congratulations, you made it possible by being here and graduating tonight. Either way, you're in a much better position to help your family, help your community, help the Beach Lake Indian Reservation, help the community wherever you're going to be living. Yes, I look forward to, as the president, reading all about the things that you guys will be doing over the months and years ahead. It's going to be a, a great gratification for me and to our faculty and staff. So graduates, congratulations, and Godspeed. Thank you, Sean. Um, next, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Mr. Dan King, who is the president of the Red Lake Nation College. Um, it's a very special night for Dan. He says he's going to keep it a little bit shorter because his son Alex is actually graduating tonight. So give him a round of applause for that. Thank you very much. I think it really says a lot about the things that we're doing at our college is when the president's son decides that he's going to go there and attend. And that's a huge thing. So, Dan Pace. Be going to go. I wanted to say first, uh, big wish to our, uh, for inviting me here tonight to help honor uh, our graduates that we have. And I did want to take uh, just a few minutes to offer my congratulations to the graduates and give a few thank yous. And don't worry, I will keep it short. Uh, my mother is here today too, so she came up for the graduation and she said, remember, we're hungry and don't turn it into gone with the wind up there. <laughs> So uh, we'll keep it real short. But uh, first, I wanted to say congratulations to all the graduates that you have achieved, like Don said, a major life milestone. Because not everyone has the opportunity, ability, and determination to accomplish what you've done. And I don't know if you realize, but not everyone, there's about for every graduate we have here, there are seven, eight, or nine other people who started and didn't finish. So for every graduate we have today, seven, eight, or nine people started and did not complete what you achieved today. So that's a great accomplishment, and you should be, be very proud uh, that you accomplished that. Because when you think about it, graduating from college is kind of like running a marathon. It's a grueling test of mental toughness, endurance, intelligence, and persistence. So I'm proud of each and every one of you, and you should feel the same way. So congratulations to our college graduates, and for the rest of your lives, you'll be called college graduates. So think about that. That's something that can never be taken away from you. From this day forward, you are college graduates. Let's give them a round of applause. Next, I have a couple of bewitches to give here. First, to the Leech Lake Tribal College Board of Directors right here, the President, Don Day, and the faculty and staff of the Leech Lake Tribal College. Because what we're doing here uh, with our educational partnership and agreement, all of these folks I just mentioned have provided great support. And let this briefly explain this partnership. What it is is, it's an agreement between the Leech Lake Tribal College and the Red Lake Tribal College that we will cooperate and work together as we try to attain our institutional accreditation. We're very close to getting that, but until we get there, we have this agreement where we share revenue sources, and also Leech Lake Tribal College has agreed to help us 
get to our accreditation. So we're very close to getting there, and it is a win-win partnership where both sides benefit. And I tell you, without this agreement, we might not even be here today with the Red Light Nation College. So it's that important to us. So at this time, I would like all of the board members, the faculty and staff of the Leech Lake Tribal College to please stand up. And on behalf of the Red Lake Nation College and the Red Lake Nation, you folks could all stand up. Let's give them another big round of applause. We wish to all of you for being great partners. And lastly, before I leave, I just wanted to give you one piece of advice for our college graduates. And that is, recently I was reading uh, an article in the paper, and it said that 65% of all the jobs by 2020, by the year 2020, will require at least a two-year or a four-year degree or more. So think about that. 65% of all jobs in 2020, that's only about six years from now. So graduates, if you do one thing in your lives, remember that you need to continue your educational journey. Continue your educational journey. And when you think about it, you're already halfway there anyway. You got the two-year degree, you're almost to the four-year degree. Because when you think about it, your family needs you to do this for economic security for the future, that 65% thing staring at you. And that percentage is only going to go up in the future. So your family needs you to do it for economic security, and your tribe definitely needs you to do it because we need future leaders and managers who have that education. Whether it's Leech Lake or Red Lake, we need more tribal member teachers, doctors, lawyers, accountants, managers, just about any field you can think of, we need more educated tribal members. So continue that educational journey because the job market requires it and your tribe and your family need you to do it. Today let me close with a quote by Harold Whitman that uh, I think could positively direct your future path in life. And uh, Whitman said, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive. And then go do that. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. So to me that says, find something that inspires you and all will be good. Be good for your time. All right, next I'm going to bring up a man who needs no introduction whatsoever, Mr. Dennis Banks. Uh, today uh, is uh, you know, it's a historic day in many, many ways. I better not push it too far, I'm going to go off the stage. Um, it's uh, historic in um, the way that it was open, our, our, our opening prayer by Mr. Jordan. Had he said that, or had he been alive in 1887, he was cited by school authorities and his rations would have been denied him for 10 days for speaking the Ojibwe language. For speaking in any language across this country other than English, especially with native people, the rations would be taken away on the second violation would be 30 days and 30 days in prison, 30 days in jail. And for the singers also, that the U.S. government said there will be no, uh, no attempt to keep the native people in their heathen state. There will be no drumming or singing of their languages and also the, uh, the dancers. So it's historic to know that we should not ever take this lightly of the hard work that the, that the tribal college movement 
did beginning in 1960 uh, the Navajo Community College. When they opened up in 1967, the first one, they pride themselves in being the first one. So I say that it's historic because this, the language you heard, the song that you heard, and the dancing that you saw proved that the U.S. government was wrong and it failed in its terrible, terrible practice, terrible, terrible effort to halt the culture of Native people. So we're, we're looking, we are part of history right now. Across America, 38 other junior college, tribal colleges, are doing and preparing for the same evening. And for two or three of those colleges, the entire procedure will be either in the Navajo language or the Lakota language. So we see, I feel very proud that we've, we've come this far. And I feel very, even more proud to know that we have this many graduates because of our faculty and our teachers. And I also feel, I'm filled with pride today knowing that our president, Dan Day, today, Dr. Day, spoke our language. So we should never ever take that lightly. So I congratulate the faculty and the staff, the groundskeeper, the builders, the people who thought of the idea of let's build a college here at Leech Lake. And these graduates can proudly show their diplomas years from now, where they graduated from. Much like next week, when the uh, Gaginic School graduates third, they can say, yes, I graduated from Gaginic. I did not graduate from Custer High School. I did not go to school there. So when I say, and when Dr. King says, let's give it a big round of applause, I'm saying, we should be yelling and screaming that this is in front of us. We are part of it. There's going to be more coming along the way, America. You've got to understand that. You failed in your mission. We are winning. Every time we send a high school graduate or a Head Start graduate, we go and attend them this week, next week, high school, and then elementary, and then high school. That's our job. That's our job as seniors, as elders, to ensure the seventh generation will be proud of us. <coughs> that they will be proud that people stood up. They stood up at a time when it was needed for Native people to stand up. So I, I stand up. I stand up every day. Funny thing happened to me this morning. I thought for some reason this event was supposed to be at 9 o'clock this morning. I, I set my alarm and oh my God. And I woke up late. Oh my God, I'm running around and jumping in the shower. This is at 6 o'clock this morning. And I, I called Gary. I said, Gary, can you pick me up? On the way down, or can you, can you do that? He said, yeah, I, said, I can do that. Well, I'm talking about 6.30 this morning. He said, yeah, he said, I'll, be, I'll be at the crossroads at quarter after three. And he said, I'll see you there. And I'm not, I'm thinking, quarter after three? So, I was standing up. I want to thank the rest of the family, you're responsible. You've carried out your duties. You carried out your responsibilities, and here they are. And, the, and to the many parents in Red Lake, their students are here. Their sons and daughters are here. 
I take my hat off to them as well. So America, our sons and daughters are going to be sitting on your board of directors someday. And we will turn this picture of the environment around. We will turn it around with our minds and our young people. Um, next, we're going to bring up our salutatorian. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about her. Uh, our salutatorian this year is Jasmine Larson. She is a single mother of two small children um, who is graduating with her associate's degree in early childhood education. Jasmine transferred here in the fall last year from White Earth Travel College, and she intends to team up with locals to initiate a pre-K Ojibwe language immersion program to replenish first language speakers and pre preserve the Ojibwe language by teaching our Ojibwe children their indigenous language from birth. She continues down her lengthy journey of schooling, embracing her dream to receive her doctorate from the University of Minnesota Duluth and create an independent, family oriented free K through 12 grade Ojibwe language immersion school. Jasmine Larson. I come before you today with not much anything prepared. I wrote 10 pages before I came here. The last five days have been rough. But I just want to stand up here and acknowledge all you students who stood beside me in this last year and struggled and made it through. Everything we've done has all paid off, guys. We made it. We're graduated. Although I have a lengthy journey ahead of me, um, this right here I'm so proud to be a part of. Travel College, I would not be where I am today if I did not have Travel College in my life. I transferred from White Earth and I started at White Earth. And I moved in here last fall, packed up my family and transferred. And we've been here for a year and I can't ask for anything more. It's been truly amazing. The faculty and staff here, have been wonderful. They're just ongoing, bending over backwards for one another, bending over backwards for us, we're their priority, and that's somewhere where I came before, where I came from, that was something we didn't have like we do here. We're really, truly fortunate to have a travel college here at Leech Lake, and I'm so happy that I'm a part of it. It's been a roller coaster these last few years because I tried so hard to do my best and I've come on top. I'm so happy. I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of all of you, all our honor graduates. Oh my goodness. I know what it takes and best believe, man. We have put up with some stuff. <laughs> when it comes to English, oh my goodness. <laughs> heart to it. You've done it. You've made it. And I'm so proud of you. And I just want to give a round of applause to everybody that's here and graduating and moving on with their life. That's awesome. Okay, I want to talk a little more about Travel College because I don't think anybody realizes how awesome Travel College really is. Truly. I've had so many opportunities throughout my three years that I've been in Travel College. It's been amazing. I've gone to AHEC. I've gone to theater conferences with AHEC. Um, it's hosted by the American Indian College Fund, who have also made me an AT&T scholar this past semester, where I was an ambassador with Vince and a few others. Don Smith, if you're here. And my friend Hannah, shout out. We all went to AHEC. The Flame of Hope Gala. We were all student ambassadors and we all represented in our colleges all across the nation and it was phenomenal. It was something I've never been to a black suit tie event or whatever and it was amazing. The people that were there were so important and I think that's everything that we need to learn as individuals is that we are so important all across the world, all across the nation. 
their strides all across the nation that are just like us. And that's what AHEC has taught me, that I can go anywhere I want to in the world, but right here, this is God's country. This is where we're supposed to be, and this is where we need to better our whole entire community. And we need to start with our children, and we need to work up. That is my main goal. That's what I foresee all of us to be. I foresee all of our children speaking the language. I foresee all of us learning our traditions and caring for it and prospering what we have. It's so important to learn your language and be who you want to be and learn who you are. It's so important to be Anishinaabe. It's amazing. Once you find your true self-identity, you are set. You just follow the path you are routed and it takes you through the best they may be obstacles, but they are the best to overcome the most powerful things in life, taking the correct path. So, with that, I just want to say good luck to you all after this. We are going to shine. We are the seventh generation, and we need to keep that in mind all the time. Um, next is going to be our valedictorian address. Um, it's pretty much your typical travel college tale. Um, she was born and raised in England. <laughs> Maybe a little bit far away from the res, but it just goes to show you that anyone can come to our travel colleges and succeed. In 1979, Melanie Erickson came to Minnesota to participate in an exchange program and to work at a summer camp for youth. She married and settled here, raising twin daughters. Life got busy, but after her two girls were grown, Melanie decided it was time to pursue her dreams of going to college, and as she says, better late than never. She has worked for the past eight years at the Boys and Girls Club of the Leech Lake area at the Deer River Unit, Mel Melanie Erickson.
whatever your struggles, don't give up. Don't worry about making mistakes. Those mistakes make things stick in our minds, and that really does help us learn. Never be afraid to ask lots of questions. I can't tell you how often I felt like an idiot in and out of the classroom. Don't let the fear of embarrassment, appearing ignorant or foolish, stop you from speaking up and seeking help. That is the way we learn. Also, I see many of the young students here at the college uh, that have to meet many challenges. They carry out jobs from time to part time, they're attending school and they're raising young children. I have the greatest respect and admiration for you. Don't give up. Don't give up on your dreams. My life's path has been blessed in many ways. Wonderful parents. Two beautiful daughters, Tamsin and Tara, and two adorable grandsons, Zane and Coda. My dear brother Paul, who, when we were children, called me Miss Boffy Boots, that may have something to do with the fact that I would make him wear my dresses when I wanted to be real cold and play with. He did turn out right then. When I first came to the United States over so 30 years ago, I'd never heard of Minnesota and I had to look up on the map. What a wild and beautiful place. I have always believed in the power of nature, and for me, there are a few things more thrilling than seeing our four lakes in the forest. I feel privileged to have encountered bear, moose, fisher, otter, and fauna. Also, among those blessings, I have the privilege of living and learning in the Mishinabe, the true people of this country. Your people have suffered many tragedies and you have also experienced many triumphs. As I start to climb the fourth hill of life, it is my hope that in the near future, all our public schools will tell me, teach the true history of what happened in the past and also what is happening today. For the children I work with every day, I hope I can be someone who helps them be proud, shared, and culture. I will endeavour to keep learning your language so that perhaps one day I will understand all the prayers I hear in the sweat lodge of that big branch. I will continue to follow the path that will lead me to a closer connection to the spirit of the Anishinaabe. In honour of all our children, the ones that are here today and also the ones to come. Prayer for our children. The star children are waiting, seeking the ones who will love them. And when they have chosen, the sky spirits will send the seeds of love to their relatives who are bound to earth. Nurture the seeds of the star children. Love and protect them. They are the gifts of Creator and precious beyond all things. We wish, Melanie. That was a great speech and also the answer to what does a British and Red accent sound like? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All day here on the drive, I was like, oh, uh, Next, I would like to announce there's going to be a couple special awards. I'd like to bring up Dr. Sharon Marcott, Vice President of Academics.
And as Jasmine pointed out, sometimes when the faculty care, there's a little bit of tough love involved. So, but, but really, because it, they do care, they care about their curriculum, but most important, it's about you and the students that they really care about. And so, please, faculty, stand. But the reason I'm here is for the Faculty of Year Award. I'd like to announce that the Faculty of the Year, voted by faculty, staff, and students, is Audrey Thayer. engaging her energy with her students. She has taught Indigenous American leadership, U.S. and Indigenous history, Indigenous American philosophy, and most recently, Intro to Anishinaabe Studies. In her remaining time, she participates in the reading and writing post of the college. Her educational background is Bachelor of Arts from the University of Minnesota, Minneapolis, and Master's degree in Education, Cambridge College, Counseling Psychology. Audrey will suggest that her love for education, engaging with students, developing a relationship is about the most rewarding experience to have with another human being. Since her time at the college, the philosophy of relationship with another person is visible with all who crosses her path. Audrey has stated that relationship building is one of the most powerful pieces in education. The sharing of knowledge between two people is powerful. She will add learning is she will add that learning is successful only if one is to have one relationship in development within the classroom. She loves to be creative, think outside the box in presenting ideas and clearly keeping an eye open for students who just need someone to gently walk alongside them with a candle through the hallways of learning. Well, I want to thank the uh, faculty and the staff and most of all the students. And it's been a, a, a wonderful experience at the Children. Uh, students, uh, why did they give us some grief? You know, if I messed up, they'd tell me, right? And I was so happy for that. It was relationships with the students, they were my life. And the energy you've given me, just from your energy, sharing about wanting to learn, it's been awesome. And I'm looking forward to seeing all of you in the future, uh, just doing wonderful things, building those houses, you guys, you can come look at my garage or something. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Elaine, too. Elaine Fleming, I've got to say thank you to you. She's my team in my department. And uh, boy, it wasn't for Elaine. I, I think that uh, I probably would have slid the left or the right to remind me. And that was Elaine. So thank you, Elaine. You know, sometimes when you're talking in public, it's, it's a little bit hard. Sometimes you stumble on your words. It's even harder when you're getting text messages the whole time. Dave Northbrook has actually texted me four times to find out if it's a buffet dinner or just a dinner. <laughs> Nadine Bill, oh, I'm sorry, we're going to bring up Steve Smith, the biology and chemistry instructor. Um, who's 
you. Uh, on behalf of the faculty, I'd like to congratulate all of this year's graduates. Um, I have the honor of announcing two very special scholarships um, that the Tribal College has established in memory of two uh, very important people, members of our family that have passed. The first scholarship is the Benny Tones Award, Benny Tones Scholarship. Benny was with the college when it started, a longtime Ojibwe and culture instructor. Uh, it's an honor to announce this year as recipient of a $500 scholarship, Tony Morris. Come on up, Tanya, if you're right there, please. <laughs> Tanya has studied two semesters of Ojibwe language and intends to continue studying the language. Uh, she works for the Leech Lake Head Start. This past semester, she was on the Dean's List. And um, she hopes to maybe one day incorporate language with her work with Head Start. The uh, second scholarship is the Leanne Dick Scholarship. Uh, Leanne was the valedictorian in 2009, uh, STEM student. Uh, she, tra uh, she died tragically in an accident uh, after uh, transferring to the University of Morris. Um, this, year's, this year we have two recipients. Um, the first is Jim, uh, James Frazier.
Next, I want to bring up Leroy Staples Fairbanks III, Leech Lake Band of Ojibwe District 3 representative. Leroy. Of course, he said, we. <laughs> I'm all out of Dave Northburg jokes, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to need someone to help me get off the parking lot stage. <laughs> down here,
some super accounting skills out there, so I hope that you know the band here, Leroy, maybe you know get some influence there and <laughs> put her in like some sort of accounting position because because she's definitely got the skills to be a great accountant. So uh, with that being said, I would just like to say congratulations to you.
changes came at some point. And many people saw resources dwindle and the need for new skills and education that not all had access to. And important traditions, cultural practices, and languages seemed to be fading. In fact, we were reminded that many times they were illegal. Mm. But in the midst of those hard times, hope didn't leave. There were those in commu our communities who said, the language will not die. Our people will be educated. We will find ways to battle these devastating diseases that we deal with, like diabetes and substance abuse. Our people will learn new skills and get educated for this modern world. And we'll have access to them. People will have jobs and our communities will survive. And they did. They found that the flames of hope and combined it with hard work and fearlessness. They were fearless to bring us to today where education is available to many, but not all. We are learning ways to combat physical, mental, and social issues, but still we have many miles to go. And languages, values, and traditions are still among us. Today, you, class of 2014, reflect the hope and hard work of people who dreamed big dreams. Dreams like there would be a Reach Lake Tribal College, where quality education based on Anishinaabe values would be provided, that would have graduates like you that honor the past, contribute to today, and start planning for our future. Your success reflects the hard work and commitment that each of you have put into this accomplishment. And it reflects the belief in you that family and friends, teachers and others have that you will continue to make a positive difference in our communities. Wow. So many have also told me of the hopes for the future of our people and our communities. And here are some of the things that I've heard. Rural communities, tribal and others, want to see our communities vibrant and singing with success. What does this mean? Every small community that I met with, from Inger to S. Lake to Deer River, wanted there to be good jobs for their people and strong local economies, quality education for their youth, healthy people, with access to outstanding health care when they need it. Strong leaders, intact families, and a connection with spirituality, with communities that are accepting of different faiths and beliefs. A home that is safe, an incarceration that is a thing of the past because we don't need it, because crime rates are low, because we will not harm each other. Homelessness doesn't exist. That's our vision for you because there's housing available to all. Reservation communities, every one of them, emphasized to me the need for our language to thrive and our people to know and live the song of the drum and traditions and values that have meant so much to us for hundreds of years. The vision for our communities that people have is phenomenal. Phenomenal communities brimming over with hope and people fearless fearless to do what needs to be done. As I listen, and communities and people tell me of this vision, I smile and my heart swells and I think, wow. Class of 2014, each of you have a role to play in this. You have prepared yourself with educational skills and learning to do so much. Some of you may be leaders in your communities, teachers, Healthcare workers, entrepreneurs, law enforcement officers, scientists, environmental stewards protecting our lakes, forests, and lands, building builders, and making sure our infrastructure is intact, and so much more. Make differences in your chosen work. Make differences for our communities. Some of you will stay right here in our rural communities, and that's great. We need you. But some of you may relocate to other places, either for more education, employment opportunities. And you know, we all are part of a broader community, too. 
and no matter where you go, that's great. Represent us well, wherever your life takes you. And remember, you can always come back. I look at you graduates, and like others with us today, am so proud of you. I have great hope for the future of our communities. Much is in your hands. You fan the flames of hope. Be fearless when action is needed. And embrace vision, the vision. Congratulations to each and every one of you. Be quitch. All right, graduates, now's the time you've been waiting for, right? As wonderful as the speeches have been, as fantastic as my jokes have been, come on, laugh a little. It's now time for the issuing of degrees. If I can get Dr. Don Day and Dan King to come on up. James Brown. 
Lord.
Linda Luther, Red Lake Nation. Robert Nettle, Jr., Red Lake Campus, Liberal Education. <laughs> Michael Needham, Red Lake Campus, Liberal Education. Victoria Northburn, Liberal Education. <laughs> Michelle Reynolds, Red Lake Campus, Liberal Education. Daniel Jordan Staples, Liberal Education. <laughs> Rexford Strong, Red Lake Campus, Liberal Education. Stuart Summer, Red Lake Campus, Liberal Education.
Graduates, one last thing before we go to eat. Move your castles to the right side. <laughs>